Hi everyone from wherever you are watching this uh, webinar in Australia, whether at the Growing Families Conference or watching the recorded version. It is so great to speak to you today about one of my greatest passions, which is family building and surrogacy and egg donation have enriched so many uh, people's lives and including my own as I've um, managed their journeys over 17 years. Today, I want to teach you how to not have an agency, how to move forward with surrogacy independently on your own, uh, whether pursuing surrogacy in Australia um, or abroad anywhere, really. However, um, some of my commentary will be uh, Canadian based as that's where I'm located here on beautiful Vancouver Island. Uh, myself and Scott run Canadian Fertility Consulting. Egg Helpers, which is our egg donor um, brand, as well as Sacred Surrogacy, offering um, retreats and a deeper, uh, meaningful process for those um, exploring surrogacy, egg donation, and becoming parents uh, through either uh, way. So I would love to just start um, by uh, acknowledging that I'm here, uh, partnered with Hope Springs Fertility Law. You'll hear from Cindy Wasser. Um, as well as Dr. Liebrack from the Crate Fertility Center. And while there is no um, a partnership in terms of financial remuneration, there is a partnership in terms of um, a collaboration. And it is so important as you move through this journey that you work with people who work with people who can refer you to people who truly understand the process and are able to support you going through the journey, which is why um, for the purposes of this webinar and, and my working relationship in Australia, it's not only Canadians that, that I will suggest you speak to, it will be also those in Australia. So these are the what I would say the top four categories of things to consider as you are proceeding with surrogacy. And um, I will take them in order and then I will also sort of jump around a bit, I'm sure. Uh, so the legal process. When intended parents contact us or hopefully other agencies you've contacted as you're doing your research, they have stopped you in your tracks and said, do you have a lawyer where you live? And I hope that if you've said no, they swiftly refer you to someone um, in your jurisdiction to have one of the most important conversations around surrogacy, which is how will I get my baby home? While it's an amazing process and I want everyone to proceed in Canada, it isn't done well if it isn't done safely. And so finding that lawyer in Australia that of course we have some great names and we'll refer you to, um, but doing so that, that they can tell you what needs to be on a legal contract, um, to ensure compliance with the Australian law. What should be in a contract to, in order to make it home most easily? What should be on a contract that will, um, that will have you going home most quickly in terms of the post-birth process? Um, and so that would be my first um, detour on your, on your road to signing up with an agency or finding a surrogate. Um, next uh, is, really looking at the medical process, um, you are a customer. And what is tricky in places like Australia and in Canada, we have a social healthcare system, which is amazing. And we love that. And it often leaves patients in a situation where they are afraid to ask questions, aren't sure about asking questions, don't wanna push, you know, and, and really in, in the surrogacy process, we need to push, we need to self-advocate, we need to do our research, we need to talk to other patients to find out what their shared experience has been um, at that clinic. And so as people are deciding, we often again send them away um, to do some research, research on clinics. And if they, um, in, in doing that research, they will decide between a few pieces. They'll decide um, you know, whether or not to ship the embryos they already have created somewhere in Australia to Canada. We are one of the most favorable places for um, 
shipping embryos. We don't have the same FDA requirements um, if you've used an anonymous egg bank donor in Australia. Um, you're able to ship the embryos into Canada, unlike um, in the U.S., uh, or it's easier, I should say. Um, also deciding on medical testing. Are you going to do your testing in Australia? Are you going to um, ship your uh, sperm from Australia? Or are you going to travel to Canada or to the U.S. to a clinic um, to do the testing, leave your samples, do an egg retrieval if, if you are um going to cycle with your own eggs. All of those pieces really, um, we want to see that worked out before you engage with a surrogate. Uh, the process to getting embryos can often be quite long. And we want to ensure that when a surrogate is available to you, whether through your own online search, through an agency, that when she shows up on the scene, you are ready to immediately proceed with her in moving, uh, moving forward with uh, her screening and her cycle and, and subsequent pregnancy. Um, next, I'll talk about finding a surrogate. So the world is getting smaller and smaller um, thanks to Facebook, Instagram, um, Snapchat, other social filters, TikTok. We have found, in fact, that the greatest recruitment tool um, is social platforms and sharing intended parent stories on those platforms whether it's sharing them anonymously or sharing videos that they have um, allowed us to. That really is the place that um, Canadian moms live. And so we are all over those platforms and we would suggest to you to start looking at that, start you know, putting into the search bar surrogacy. Um, and if it's Canada or the US or Australia, wherever you're pursuing, to put that into the search bar and see how people are finding their own surrogates through their own social networks. It's been amazing to watch um, these connections be made and um, families grow uh, through a Facebook meetup group. And so getting really clear about what you're looking for in terms of a surrogate. Are you looking for a surrogate who will terminate for a medical abnormality? Are you looking for a surrogate who lives in Vancouver, British Columbia because your sister and brother live there? Are you looking for a surrogate who is interested in a relationship post-birth? Or are you looking for a surrogate who isn't? All of the pieces around really distilling the information that, or the ideas that you have, and if you have a partner that they have, to really come up with a, a comprehensive list of what is most important as you're searching for a surrogate. Um, advertising, um, as I said before, really showcasing yourselves on social platforms, uh, ensuring that you are, um, that you're out there, that, that people are seeing you should you be going um, independently, asking people to share um, your, uh, your story. If there's um, a podcast that you always listen to and it's on family building or it's, you know, someone you know has a podcast, ask them to interview you. We talk to surrogates every day and they, you know, almost always tell us the same thing. We had no idea surrogacy existed until we saw, until we heard, um, until we came across. And so it's really just the point of getting out there and getting your story out there. Because I, I can tell you one thing, your story is compelling and it will attract the person who is meant to, to help you. Um, next, looking at location, um, you know, where's the surrogate going to live? Um, how quickly can you get there, whether it's the other side of Australia or the other side of the world here in Canada, and really making sure that legally you can be named as parents on a birth certificate. And I'm sure Cindy will speak about that. Um, you know, Ken is very open. We have surrogacy for everyone. Um, and <clears throat> the province of Quebec um, has grown and become quite popular. Um, and I'll allow Cindy to talk to sort of the, the birth certificate process there and who it makes sense for and who it doesn't. Um, and, and so you'll, you'll hear from Cindy on that. Um, in terms of screening your surrogate, um, you know, you are your best advocate and you will take care of your baby by taking care of the details for your surrogate, ensuring she has somewhere to do her screening, 
outside monitoring, um, preparation for the embryo transfer. And so we will work, um, you know, should you work with an agency, we organize all of that. And many intended parents who have gone independently without an agency have, have been able to sort that for their surrogate as well. Um, so next I wanna talk about um, finances, expenses, tough talk and details. So as you're pursuing surrogacy, US, Canada, Australia, really having a clear picture of what the financial piece looks like and then adding 20%. And I say add 20% because that is what we see people um, routinely come back and tell us that they spent 20% more than anticipated, 20% more than they thought they would. And so it's really important that you um, are budgeting for the what ifs. What if she doesn't become pregnant the first time? What if she suffers a loss during the pregnancy and you're starting back at square one? Really, really important to look at and ask all providers, if it's an agency, a fertility clinic that offers a guaranteed package, what is within that package and what is not within that package. And really, um, you know, pull up an Excel spreadsheet, you know, and start keeping track and, and taking notes. Um, as you're speaking to a surrogate, really understanding the laws where she lives and whether or not you can pay her, reimburse her for her expenses. Um, it's vital that you have that conversation up front. Um, we have had surrogates come into our program who have said things like, I just like my expenses covered. And then when we dig further and, you know, start to have that conversation, the expense expectation greatly exceeds what, what we would be able to, to accommodate. And so we do ask that, you know, that surrogates get really clear about that through a questionnaire. And my suggestion for you would be as well to, to sort of have that kind of questionnaire um, handy and, and figure that out. In terms of expenses, as you are reimbursing her, how that's gonna work, are you going to reimburse her through wire transfers, through PayPal, um, and how will you keep an appropriate paper trail? to ensure that everyone's on the same page about how much money has been reimbursed and at what stages of pregnancy. Uh, next is tough talk. You know, um, is your surrogate willing to terminate for medical abnormality? And what does that look like for you? Um, if she's not, what does that look like for you? Making sure that the surrogate you pick, you've had those tough talk conversations around bed rest, who will care for her, should she be taken off work or unable to care for her children? Um, and then post birth, what does that sort of month long process look like or three week process look like if while you're in Canada or abroad um, in terms of uh, how much you'll see her? Will you see her? Will you ask her to pump milk for you? Will you not? You know, having some of those questions answered ahead of time will really give you a sense of who this person is and if this person is a fit for you. Um, Working with an agency, um, an agency isn't necessary. Um, many people plan their weddings without a wedding planner. And I would say the same to you as you're pursuing surrogacy to uh, speak to others and, and find out, did they find value in working with an agency? Did they view it as insurance? Which a lot of people tell us, they say, well, I just, I wanted to know I had someone there that I could ask questions to that, um, you know, if something went wrong, was there to support me or to support my surrogate across the world. Um, and, you know, we, we also say there is support along the way that isn't agency affiliated. So working with a fertility clinic that has an in-house counselor who can support you along the way, having a lawyer who can support you along the way, having a family member or friend or group of friends through a surrogacy online community is, is also um, a fantastic idea. Um, and getting home with your baby, you will get home with your baby because your lawyer's fantastic. It will not be because of an agency. Uh, so thank you so much, everyone, um, for this last 15 minutes. Uh, please reach out with any questions. I would love to uh, connect with you. And as I say to most of my intended parents, I hope pregnancy happens for you on your own and I never have to hear from you. But if not, I'm here and available and look forward to speaking to you.